Good morning. Today we are going to be having a quick look at how to make our own video players and uh, bring in input from something like a webcam. So Max 7 now has these built in by default, but I prefer the manual method as you still get a lot more control. It's just what I'm used to. So we're going to start off with our manual video player. So in Max 7 you can now just go to their video and literally drag it in and you've got a video player here. Put it into a window. Just like that you've got a video player. But what I am going to do is get rid of that and make my own. And we're going to do it through something called jet.qt.videoout. Uh, no, not jet.qt.movie. And simple as that, it's, it almost does exactly what we just saw there, but there's not all the fancy buttons and stuff yet. I'm going to toggle it, and we're going to need a metro that will keep playing it as if our frames per second, so it knows to keep changing frame. I am going to send movie a read message. What this will do if we sample it, is it will bring up a window browser. So instead of having to go with the predefined ones here, we can pick any video we want. And that's it playing our video. Uh, it's not hooked up yet. But if we do that, you'll see that it's now playing this different video. I'm also going to add a start and a stop message. So now, in simple steps, we have essentially made exactly what we were looking at before, but now it's done through buttons without the visual display. If you still want that part, we can add the new uh, object called a play bar, which does exactly what it says in the tin, and it will act as that visual representation that we're used to of, uh, so let's us scrub, let's us set the repeat, and then we can uh, skip forward and back. I prefer start and stop because it means that if I'm actually manually controlling video with uh, objects or sort of uh, triggers throughout the project then it means that I can manually do it rather than having to input into this. But there's nothing stopping you having both methods. So now if I send a bang to start or stop then it will play or stop the movie but I still have control with this play bar which is nice and uh, much easier to use. One thing you also get control of here that we don't with those, uh, with these video players, is that I can control the dimensions. So this is a something like a fourteen forty by sixteen hundred video. It's a very weird resolution because I recorded just a section of my screen. But now, if I pass a message into jit.qt.movie with the word dim. Uh, 240 by 160, let's go something really bizarre. I now have manual control over the resolution in the video. Let's see if it'll let me go down to something really weird. Oh, helps if we play it. There we go. So now it's a 10 by 16 pixel video we're playing. And again, this is much more control, so you could have variables coming into this that change. So if you want to play about with the idea of pixelation or censoring parts of your video, you can do that just simply by using this manual method. Uh, and that's about it for, for movies. Just let me stop that. Uh, one thing I would note is, as far as I'm aware, it's been a while since I've used Windows, is jit.dx.movie if you're on Windows because it uses DirectX, we use QuickTime on Mac, it's simple as that. Right, uh, let's get that out of the way, bring this over, delete that, and now the fun part, we are going to look at how to bring in video from an external source, so it's called digitizing video from an analog input, so webcam is what we're going to use here. It's going to start off in a very similar manner, we're going to Metro, toggle a metro, and we are going to bring this into jet.qt.grab. 
and in a very similar fashion it responds to all the same messages that jit.qt.movie does but instead of start and stop we need to send out the message open and close and all this does is it tells it to open the source or close the source so now if we plug this in start our toggle open it on my laptop my webcam flashes and there we go we're recording video if I push close the video stops recording if I open it again the webcam will kick into life so you can have the source open and your metro not banging and the webcam will start and stop instantly whereas if you open and close it you're physically closing off that device why that's useful is that let's say you're doing some weird installation that has lots of uh, cameras involved and you're looking at different angles we can introduce lots of different uh, selecting different inputs so to do that we are going to send a message called get vdevlist and I'm just going to hook that up to the toggle at the top so every time that we switch it on it, it sends the get vdev list and that just it's short for get video device list we're going to root uh, vdev list so every time that the jit.qt.grab is sent a bang message it will output a video device list we're going to iterate that Uh, these are just some quick uh, needed objects so that it pro populates a U menu for us properly, properly. And a U menu is just a fancy selection tool. There's nothing in it at the moment, so I can't click it. But what this will do, it will give us a drop down list of things to choose from. And then next, I'm going to send a clear message. So every time that it receives a toggle, it will then clear this U menu and repopulate it for us. So now. If I bang it, you will see that it populates it with the only camera I have plugged in. But if I was to select a different input here, nothing would currently happen because I don't have any messages out. So simply we're going to add a message which is v device dollar sign one. So we're going to pass it our variable that we select. It's going to be video device our selection. Just to visualize that. Veg zero is the menu option here. We delete that, get rid of that mistake. And then I'm also going to put a little bang here. And what this is going to do, every time that we select a new video device, we're going to reopen the camera. And we're going to send this video device into the jit.qt.grab. So now what happens is we have a jit.qt.grab that is sending a video device into a U menu. We select something different and it then reopens it there. So because it's in the bang and I select the FaceTime camera again, it just restarted everything. But if you have different lists, it will flick through them. Instead of open, you could just always have all your sources open and just have FaceTime camera switching them uh, or have jit.qt.grab switching to whatever you select so it's much smoother. Finally, very similar to what we did with the movie in the end, I'm going to use a tree boxes here because it's much nicer to look at. Adapt. What adapt means is that the output will scale to whatever input it has. So uh, jet.qt.grab and jet.qt.movie have a default dimension of 320 by 240. But you can see here, because I'm using the HD camera, it's scaled to 1280 by 720. If we turn off adapt, we can start playing with these uh, values let's go to 12 and 7 and again without doing any real work at all we've got some very very cool visual effects already that we can play with so that was just a quick tutorial on how to manually make a video input and a video player in Max without having to rely on the built-in ones that we have here it gives you a bit more control and it's a bit of fun to play about with while you're still learning